You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your host, Lidor Dayan, and in this episode, I give you a very, very interesting guy. You know him by being the CEO of Kinobody.com. He has helped thousands of boys and girls achieving, in his words, that chiseled Hollywood physique. He is Gregory Ho Gallagher. <coughs> Uh, excuse me. So without further ado, let's begin the interview. And I got you a little bonus in the end, so stay tuned. First of all, I want to thank you very much for being in my podcast. So it's really an honor and I really respect you and uh, your work in the fitness industry. I've been watching your stuff for like maybe a year, something like this. And I really love your consistency and everything that you put out there. So it's amazing, man. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. So uh, for for those that uh, don't uh, really know you, so tell us a little bit about uh, your story and how how fitness started for you. Sure. Um, well, I was always very very um, drawn to fitness from an early age. I love the idea of just being stronger, faster, more powerful, more muscular. You know, as young as I can remember, six, seven, eight years old, I had action figures. I watched, you know, movies and TV shows, and this was in the '90s. And um, I was just so drawn to the idea of getting stronger. And you know, once I was old enough, I just wanted to start working out, doing push-ups, chin-ups. You know, and teenagers get was a teenager getting into lifting weights. It was just something that I was so drawn to. I really want to understand your your own story like a, a lot of people think that everything was given to you or something like that and they don't really see behind the scenes like uh, what it takes to really make it and the artwork the editing the videos because I I do it the same so I know what it takes that you do a lot of stuff behind the scenes and everybody thinks that ha ah, you have uh, everybody that's doing this to, uh, for you but Uh, tell us a little about the, the journey and uh, uh, what it really takes uh, to really make it and get to the top. Yeah, um, well, it took a long time. I um, I remember when I first started my business, I pretty much just dropped out of university and I was researching um, this area very substantially. And I had, I had an idea of what I really wanted to create, you know, with my fitness brand, something different, something that was really, you know, based on what works, really based on being able to enjoy life, not being obsessed, and really just doing this really cool look. And, you know, I mean, a lot went into it, you know. Um, getting a website to get hundreds of thousands of visits a month was very difficult, all organically. You have to learn SEO, you have to write really high quality articles. What was really amazing with my brand was that um, most people like go to websites, they go there, they leave, go, but people that came to my site, they're really engaged, they stayed there, they loved it, like, you know, they shared with their friends, and grew very naturally, and then I started doing YouTube videos, and that grew very, very fast, um, but, I mean, yeah, no, there's a ton of work that goes into all aspects of this, um, you know, especially when you're creating products, and you're... I mean, no, there's a, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot going on there. And uh, was there a moment when everything, like, changed for you? Like, when you said, fuck it, this is got to change or something like this? Because a lot of people have a moment in their life that uh, something gets you really emotional and then you're like, okay, I got to change it and I got to do something with it. Um, like a moment when... Things started to be to be to really work for a moment when I just really wanted to, to change my life. It changed your life because like, uh, you were like a, a shy kid, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, no, that's right. I was a very shy kid. Yeah. Well, I I mean, 
really the moment was um, when I was in university and I was just in these classes and I just didn't feel right. I just didn't feel like this was the path to my dreams. I knew I'd get out of there. I just I did something really cool. And the other moment that really hit me was when I started to um, read the Psych Fitness Black Book by Rusty Moore. I reached out to him one day. I said, "Hey, look, I want to start a fitness website. Can you give me a few tips?" And he's you, and we started talking, and he had some really good uh, stuff to teach me. And he, he was already he was already making a, a full time income, doing very well from his just from his blog. It was growing. He was getting tons of traffic. I'm like, "Shit, I need to learn how to you know build this this online internet you know blog business." Mm-hmm. And once I knew that Rusty was doing really well, I was like, "Okay, I can do this too." And. Uh... How do you make sure that when you you have to work like either writing, editing, uh, you that don't get distracted because a lot of people get distracted or procrastinate and uh, what is your your routines like if you are getting into to work how you're focusing on it and not let anything distract you? Yeah, um well, to me it's just really having a strong goal in mind of what you're trying to accomplish if you if you're very connected to your goals you'll be very focused so you know every every day um, you know I, I recommend I recommend people buy a little journal book and on the first three or four pages of the journal book all they have are their goals they want to accomplish for the year so every morning they can go in those first three pages whether it's their fitness goals for their what they want to you know improve with their you know the body fat their strength their muscle be their business goals and be their relationship or you know the relationship goals or lifestyle goals and just like every morning you know maybe not every single morning but you know when you really need that extra kick in the butt like just read through those goals get excited and start working um, also definitely find that um, doing some meditation or listening to some power of now getting really present helps you get more focused because you're not as distracted you're more in the moment you're more you know, stuck right into your work Are you still doing meditation like every morning? What is your morning ritual? Well, I, I stopped doing meditation for a while, but I've kicked started it again the last over the last few weeks. It's been really it's been really powerful. Um, usually my morning routine is, you know, wake up, I'll, I'll, I'll get on my uh, computer, my phone, start doing some uh, checking my email, checking my Slack with my team that I work with, um, doing some social media posts, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and you know, uh, and then I'll get, like some, some of the work done, um, if I'm going to be shooting some videos, I'll, I'll make some coffee, get the coffee in my system, shoot some videos, record some stuff. Um, oftentimes I'll go for a walk and I'll walk over to the coffee shop and I'll put on some Eckhart Tolle, some power up now and just listen to it for a 20 minute walk and, you know, then get some work done at the coffee shop. Um. Some days I'll have a videographer come over for four hours and we'll just shoot videos. Um, but, you know, that's pretty much it. I just get up and start working. And uh, how can you really, like, for the, the guy that's just starting out, like, how can you really build a, a good team under you? Because uh, you know that a team is something that's very important if you really have high goals. So you can't really do it alone. You need to have a good team. So how, how did you find good people to, to really uh, build around you? Um, they pretty much came to me. Like, I just got connected. Like, I didn't even try and find them. We just somehow we got, we got connected and, uh, and then we decided to try working together and it went really well, so we kept doing it. And then eventually when we wanted want to hire more employees, I reached out to my followers and told them we want to hire employees. We interviewed some of my followers that they thought were going to be good. Pick the best ones and we, we hired them full time. Mm-hmm. I, I, I want to take you to uh, something really different. And I, saw, I saw a video of you uh, that uh, you talked about the, the loss of your father. So uh, tell us a little bit about it if you, if you want to share. Uh, how old were you when uh, he passed away? Uh, I was 11. I was 11. So um, I was pretty young and I was very, was completely. Uh, I was devastated and um, I was, it, was, uh, it was a pretty big event in my life and I guess in that moment I really realized I had to kind of learn how to become successful on my own because he wasn't really there to guide me. How, how was he like? like? Was he a father figure? Like you always want to be like him? Um, he 
Yes. Yeah, he was an extraordinary man. Um, just had tons of self-belief, and he was extremely charming. He wanted everyone in his company to feel amazing. If you were with him, he'd want to give you the best experience possible. Um, so he was just, he was, he had to have the, the, the best of the best, you know. We went to Florida, and this was before my father even had a lot of money. Um, this was when he still was starting his businesses, was in a lot of debt. And we went to this one hotel, and uh, it was an expensive hotel, but there was, there was something about the hotel that, that, that he didn't like. He didn't want to bring my, my family, uh, my, my mom, me, my older brother, I think that was the only kids at the time, to the second best hotel. So we left and we went to the absolute best hotel. And I don't think he could afford at the time, but um, uh, after that, I mean, uh, he had some deals come through and he started making tons of money. Um, that was just thing. You're in this company, you had to have the, the best of the best. It was make no small plans. It was to never settle. Do you think like uh, this is a moment you started to demand more from yourself or it's really like made you more hungry to achieve more, to become more? Because to, to have something like this in your life, like uh, a loss of a father, so it really can get you to two, two things. Like you can get super depressed or you can really like, okay, from this day and on, I'm going to demand more for myself or my father. Like you think this is what made you more hungry in life? Well, I think that I really wanted to... Um... I really want to honor my father, you know, when he, when he passed, and you know, I was, uh, it's very emotional. Um, and I want, I mean, to me, like to really, to, to honor him, I had to really, you know, rise to the top and go and like make the most out of life. So that's what I felt, you know, if I didn't, if I just kind of, if I didn't take it seriously, if I didn't, if I didn't push myself, then I'd be, uh, you know, I would, I would be, uh, wouldn't be honoring him. Mm -hmm. And, and there are so many guys out there that really see you as a role model and, and they're still scared, still afraid, and they're living in their minds, right? Because we all have that self-doubt and uh, insecurities and we want to do something, we want to make video and if I like, uh, okay, let's do a video in the gym and you thinking in yourself like, fuck, what am I doing? Everybody is looking at me, I'm looking ridiculous. So how can you step outside that fear their inner thought because you made it you made the shift and a lot of people still living in that fear and uh, I as well was very shy boy and I want to know from your perspective how how did you make that shift well a couple of things one you gotta realize that um, life is really short it's all it's you know it's you know we're living right now but eventually it's gonna be all over when you have that perspective of how short life is, and this is your life, it's not someone else's life, this is your life. When you realize that, you realize how silly it is to be so stuck in your head. Oh, you know, if this is my dream to go and build this business, am I really gonna care what a few people think about? Mm -hmm. Is that gonna stop me, them, me being a little worried that they're watching me? You realize how silly that is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you just realize that you know how short life is, and that it's your life, and you owe it to yourself to, to go for what you want. Then you're an absolute, um, you're completely moronic if you let someone else, their judgment stop you. But most people know this intellectually; they know everything you say, but they're still there's something stuck it's like I'm taking a calculator okay if I tell you uh, take one and multiply it by one what will you get one of course right but if I uh, calculate one multiply one but there is seven stuck in there so I will always get seven right so it's something in our mind that has to really uh, we need to release it's something that stuck us so do you think it's like you get to get to a threshold like enough is enough? Well, in your situation, um, in this, in this uh, hypothetical situation, what's really going on? This person is scared to go after their dreams or scared or they're trying to, they're already starting their business, but they're not taking it as seriously or they're scared to really put themselves out there. Is that the, is that the hypo hypothetical yeah, we're talking maybe about? Maybe it's like... He's starting something and then every, every, uh, he takes like two steps back. 
like one forward, two back? I'll give you the honest answer. Not everyone's going to become successful. Some people don't have it in them. You don't Some think everybody have it in them? They don't. It, it, it's, it's, it's impossible. It's completely, it's completely impossible for every single person in the world to be successful. But it's in it's them. It's it, it, It's like something that even if it's hidden inside, it's something that truly can be. be. But if it never comes out, does that even matter? Not not everyone is going to become successful, and, and and this is this is actually one of the issues with self help in general. It tries to it, it wastes people's time that never have the really the, the go getter attitude. I mean, some people can't handle risk. Some people they they, they they're, they're scared of risk. They're scared of judgment, and. You know, to to be able to rewire that because I've seen people for years and years and years half-ass it and always pretend they're, they're going to start this business or start their business. And I knew from the beginning these people are fucking full of shit. They're lying. They're not actually going to go 100% at it. They're just pretending to like go and start this business and they're pretending to do all these things and mentally masturbate about doing it, but they don't actually have that tenacity to become successful. You have, I mean, there are a few things you really, you really, you really fucking need. Is um, one you gotta be a, you gotta, it's, it's speed of implementation. You have to fucking do it right now. Everyone waits in a month. Okay, I got they, they make the everything go by so slow. You have to be able to do it right now. And if you're already someone where it's taking you three months to buy your website, you're never gonna become successful ever. Buy every single book in the world. No, you're not gonna do it. If you want it that bad, you would have already done it. But you don't want it that bad, so go and fucking work at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. The reality is not everyone, this isn't for everyone, and not, you can't teach pigs to fly, and if, if, if people don't have that in them, they won't get it, because look, not everyone's going to become a professional athlete. Some people can train so fucking hard, they'll never be able to, you know, be an NBA player. I, I can't be an NBA player. Some people, you know, they're just never going to be able to, you know, go and create their own business. It's just a fact. Uh, you know, more, but people can, for sure, if you're listening, you have that tenacity, that nature in you. You can, but 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 some people just don't have it. And, and and you know, I used to I used to be the person that would say, oh, anyone can become successful, anyone can go and start this business. And the more I, I believed that, the more I met more and more people, I realized how fucking how much of a fucking lie that was. Do you think maybe, but uh, it's That's my, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I totally understand. But do you think like if we take a random guy that has no hunger inside of him and we put him. Uh, with a bunch of hungry people that are really driven, you think something will hit him? That will help. That will help for sure. Being around really, really successful, driven people will definitely rub off on you. Um, you know, really cultivating a very, very solid environment. That's not enough to, to take to turn someone at like 180. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, I know people that literally were around negative situations and just hustled their asses off so you can't you can't shape someone's entire future just by being around the right people it's a, it's a very 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 important factor help rise you that, that extra 20 percent or whatever of, of growth but if you don't have the if you don't have that underlying drive motivation determination willingness to take on risk you don't have that if you don't have that desire to can learn everything you can to succeed if you don't have that super like you know strong drive then hanging around people that have it isn't going to make you go from someone that just is a pussy into an absolute beast yes i mean unless unless you unless you always had that drive you just, you just it never came out and then all of a sudden some catalyst happened and now you have this crazy drive mm -hmm. and i think this is what a lot of people missing and uh, they like uh, always seek for knowledge a lot of knowledge but knowledge without the right uh, emotional state will never really give you something because when you are in the the emotional state that you okay i gotta study this i gotta know this then you really apply right so i wanted to ask you how do you handle with pressure moments 
because as the when you are starting to grow and grow in business and stuff and a lot of people are talking and a lot of people always is like can say shit stuff right because the more you are successful the more haters you have so how do you handle with haters and pressure moments I mean, in, in some cases it's really irrelevant um, you know if it's just if it's just stupid hate comments drama that aren't really like constructive then you just kind of ignore it don't let it don't let it um, distract you from helping the people that you really help and so from that side of things like if it's just it's just like a lot of like stupid hate it's not like hate that's actually good feedback then I'll just I'll just cut it out of my mind don't even, don't even go there or just you know walk um, but as far as like pressure moments um, really just simplest thing is you know if you're in a pressure situation get present what, what can you do right now because really you get a fear and um, anxiousness and you uh, And those negative emotions they um, it's a result of all of, of all of thinking way too much think about all these things that are happening and that, that may or may not happen in, in the future moment so you all you kind of get paralyzed by so much and it's impossible to deal with um, but when you're just like okay this is the situation just get very logical the situation all right what do I need to do right now like what's the thing I can do right now and And just kind of getting more present holding your attention in on this moment right here what are you actually really dealing with is it even that much pressure a lot of times we just build things up in our mind and make them ten times worse than they are mm-hmm. and then you know what's the you know what's the worst case scenario in this situation what happens if I you know people may think that some little thing could be the end of the world and it's you know, when you're logical and you're you know then you realize uh, all right well if this doesn't go well then I always have these other options um, And then also any kind of failure is really a learning learning experience so you know you, you always want to be learning from your failures not just dwelling on them yes uh, I wanted to ask you what what is Greg mission in life like if we look at mission because I see you as a very good leader to the world uh, with all of the stuff that you're doing with social media so what is your mission how you see it well I Pretty much I've come to this conclusion and really my mission is just really to, to really like follow my passions I'm someone that I if I'm gonna do something I have to be in it 110% so I can't just do something just to do it so for me it, it, it's a couple things it's one always you know always just find that passion what is gonna excite me the most and What am I going to work the hardest on it's gonna be so much fun and then secondly it's always striving for improvement so that's my mission in life always be striving for improvement and really just finding out like you know being curious and finding out like what is my passion right now what am I having the most fun doing um, and uh, you know right now I'm having a lot of fun with my building my business keto body um, you know providing more content and be doing more more courses and I have a lot of fun doing that I'm having so much fun in my own life um, you know working out with my own fitness working out I want to I want to uh, I got really relaxed with my eating you know I'm mean, eating out every single day drinking a lot but I'm still training but now I want to get more folks in my training hit, hit a new uh, personal best in my physique um, I'm doing kick pot like martial arts I love training that so I'm always like you know pushing myself and the other thing I'm gonna be working on more is uh, is filmmaking. Um, so I love the film industry so I want to be involved in that um, so that's gonna you know just for me it's really just about just really following my passion I don't just do something just because I'm trying to make money I do it because I'm like this is what I have to do I can, this is what I, I love doing so because there are two things that we want to master in life right there are there is the science of achievement and the heart of fulfillment and So do you basically it's it's like you really know how to achieve and you strive for more but uh, do you really uh, fulfit from it you see like you're truly fulfit like your heart is like you're connected yeah and uh, last 
questions that I wanted to ask you that I always ask uh, the people I interview is what le is the legacy that uh, you would want to live after you will no longer be here in this world? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, hmm, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I, I want to lead a positive, very positive example for my family. I don't have, I don't feel like I need to leave, leave a legacy to the entire world. I don't know, I don't really, I don't really, I don't like, that doesn't really inspire me to like just, you know, to be gone and like, to, to leave like, you know, I don't, I don't need that. So it's more like a personal life. legacy, like for the family? I don't, when I'm gone, it's really all about the family, you know, the people close to me. Like if I'm gone, I, I don't, I, like my idea is to leave this worldwide legacy. Um, but um, I mean, there's so many great people that, that have already, you know, done just that. Um, and I'm not trying to compete with them, but you know, if, it, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what legacy. We'll see. We'll see what direction. You know. Um, but if anything, you know, especially to like people close to me, it's just like enjoy fucking life. Enjoy it. Stop being so stressed all the time. Like smile. Mm -hmm. Enjoy life. Go after what you want. Stop complaining about what you hate. Change it. You know, never. You know, never stop making excuses. Take responsibility of your life. Take control. Really go for what you want. Just enjoy life. Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy life. Find a way to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. If you're miserable, find a way to change it. Don't complain. So I mean, I just think that you know, this life you should it, it, you should be loving it. If you're not, you better find a way to change it, because that's the way my brain works. In the past, when I've when I've been happy, when I've been frustrated, when I've been, I just I I didn't. Some people just accept that. Oh, I, you know, life sucks. That's just life. And I'm like, fuck it. I have the power to change it. Why am I not happy? Like, what's going on there? What, what would I really love to have in my life? Be doing? How, like, what would I need for it to be awesome? All right, how do I get that? Okay, what do I have to do? Okay, I don't, I don't 100% know, but let me just take a shot. Maybe this, you know. All right, I gotta get, you know, I gotta get in better shape. I gotta get more confident. Okay, I gotta go socializing more. Okay, I gotta, I wanna start building a fitness business. Okay, I don't know how to do that, but let me just start with something. I gotta learn how to build a fitness business. You know, whatever it is, you just, it's just really fucking going for it. It's like, as long as people has expectation from something they're trying to achieve, they will never be uh, happy, right? Because uh, we, when we turn our expectation into appreciation, then you really start to, to appreciate the, the little stuff. And like you said, like really live in the moment, living every single moment and not always like, I need to do this, 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 and I need to get this. And until I don't achieve this, I can't be happy. And once you achieve it, you realize, okay, I have a moment of yes, and then fuck. Now, now what? <laughs> so we we get to an understanding that we are enough, and once we really understand that uh, we we can really appreciate the small stuff on daily on daily days, like so, we really start to live. So I really want to thank you, man, uh, for your time, for being here in my podcast. And it was really great talking to you. Uh, I believe a lot of people can take a lot of value from this interview. So thanks a lot, man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Bonus. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure 100% what accent that was, but yeah. Yeah. Radu has Romanian accent. I have... Uh, He's right. Yes. I thought you. I thought your. Thought your accent was Romanian. No, uh, Romanian is Romanian. more like hi. It's Radu here. <laughs> yeah, hi. It's Radu here. Hi. <laughs> we will talk about the L to get to win. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was killing me with his video. Yeah, I think I take the the accent to my advantage. Must be this point. You have to have the metabolism set point to build the muscle while staying very lean. <laughs> now let's look at this graph. <laughs>
It's just going to have to go Z. I need too many. I, I was trying to use accent. Yeah, yeah, he's super Dude. funny. Oh, thank you, Greg. I really appreciate you are here. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. I know, it's, it's good. It's a great accent. Yeah. 